This video was brought to you by War Thunder. Tesla was born in Smillion, 1856. Tesla invented toys for himself. He used June bugs. So he would tie strings to the bug's legs. <laughs> well, he would tape them onto a, a windmill and to power the windmill. They would fly around, their wings would spin the turbine. He begged his father to send him to technical school, but his father wanted him to follow his footsteps and become a priest. And Tesla was not interested in that. As a stroke of faith, Tesla gets extremely sick with cholera and couldn't leave his bed for nine months. His parents thought he actually was going to die. And Tesla kind of played that up a little bit and said, hey, if you guys will send me to technical school, I'll pull through. And, and, he, and his father agreed. And of course, he snapped to life. And then, <laughs> you know, that gave him the inspiration to, to get through that. Tesla went to uh, school and this professor brought out what's called a Graham motor. And that motor was DC and it used brushes. And let me tell you, Tesla was not impressed. He thinks the motor is too noisy and efficient, being the main problem the brushes. He thinks a better motor would get rid of the brushes altogether. He vocalizes his opinion, to what the professor responds. Mr. Tesla may accomplish great things, but he certainly will never do this. It would be equivalent to converting a steadily pulling force like gravity into a rotary effort. It is a perpetual motion scheme, an impossible idea. That is quite the bold statement, especially because it's absolutely wrong. I mean, Tesla is known for solving that problem. So why would the professor say that? Let's start by looking at the Graham Dynamo. Graham is the name of the man who developed the dynamo. And dynamo means generator. But wait a second, I thought we were talking about electric motors. Well, that's one of the many cool things about electric motors. They can also be generators. If you apply a voltage to a motor, it rotates. And if you rotate the motor, it generates a voltage. Sponsor time. The Messerschmitt Me-163 Comet is the only rocket airplane operated by a human in history. It was deployed during the Second World War and it was powered by a methanol hydrogen peroxide rocket engine. I don't know if you watch my videos, but that's a pretty violent reaction. It had 2,000 kilograms of thrust. It could reach 1,000 kilometers per hour in 1943. Now, was this the most dangerous airplane you could ever pilot? Yes. Would I like to give it a go? Yes. Could I give it a go? Well. Yes, with War Thunder. War Thunder is a free epic multiplayer war game that allows you to battle your friends using every single war vehicle you can imagine. Tanks, battleships, helicopters, and this. Yeah. The game allows you to customize your vehicle to match your personality and unique approach to battle. Battle that can happen in deserts, forests, and snow-covered mountains. You also have the new update Kings of Battle. For the first time, the game features a unique Flanders map that changes depending on the vehicle you're playing with. Additionally, the legendary Black Hawk helicopter has made its debut in the game. Download War Thunder for free using the link in the description. All new players and those who have not played for 6 months or more receive a bunch of gifts. Rentals for the P-40E1 aircraft and M4 tank for a week with cool skins, a special decorator and other bonuses. Thank you so much for supporting this channel and let's get back to the video. Now, believe it or not, the difference between this 150 years old electric motor and this tiny guy that is very common nowadays is not that big. Any DC motor uses the two same basic things. Permanent magnets and electromagnets. Electromagnets are just copper wire coiled around something. And they have a cool property. They only become magnets when you pass an electric current through them. The rest of the time, they don't do much. Now, imagine a setup where you have a fixed permanent magnet and an electromagnet that can rotate. If I pass a current through the electromagnet, it turns on, gets attracted by the permanent magnet and rotates a little bit. And that's basically it. Nothing much happens after that. To turn this into a motor, we need a clever way of turning the electromagnet on and off at the right times. And that is where the commutator and the brushes come in. The commutator and the brushes are just a simple mechanism that not only turns the electromagnet on and off, but actually reverses the polarity of the electromagnet. It's a smart solution, but not an efficient one. And Nikola Tesla knew he could do better. But the answer didn't come to him right away. In the meantime, the telephone was just arriving in Europe, so Tesla went to Budapest to work on that enterprise. There he stands out for being able to do what he did best, solve problems. He developed an amplifier for the phones that helped people with poor hearing to be able to actually use the phone. One day, while walking with his friend Sagetti in the city park of Budapest, Tesla has a blinding vision. It was his eureka moment. He picked up a stick and drew the diagram for the new motor while saying, see my motor, watch me reverse it. It was a reversible motor. It was also hailed as one of the most important inventions of modern history. But why? Well, do you remember the brushes? 
This motor doesn't have brushes. That means an increase in efficiency from 50% to 96%. As a motor, that's fantastic. But as a generator that produces power for entire cities, that's monumental. But wait a second. I thought getting rid of the brushes was impossible. How did Tesla manage to pull that off? Well, the answer is gonna sound a little bit silly, but basically it rotates the entire magnetic field. No mechanical parts required. This is a very simplified version of Tesla's solution, and the first thing you might notice is that the permanent magnets are gone. Instead, Tesla replaced those permanent magnets with electromagnets that turn on and off in a cycle to simulate a rotating magnetic field. To avoid mechanical switches, he uses three phase of alternating current, because alternating current fluctuates in a sinusoidal manner, not only turns itself on and off, but it actually reverses itself. That all sounds very interesting, but how do you get three phase alternating current? Well. You use a three-phase motor as the generator. Come on, guys, keep up. Now that Nikola Tesla had the golden ticket idea, what he needed was money to build a prototype. Because ideas everyone has, but few are the ones that are able to make them work. To get money, Nikola Tesla went to Paris, where he didn't have the best experience ever, because he had to spend every single dime he made trying to build the prototype. In one instance, his employer, Mr. Puskas, asked him how he was getting along in the new city. To what Nikola Tesla replied, the last 29 days of the month are the toughest. Eventually, Nikola Tesla is able to build this prototype, and he knows exactly what to do next. He needs to show it to the one person that is revolutionizing the world with electricity, Thomas Alva Edison. Tesla didn't understand how vested Edison was in DC. He really thought that Edison was like, you know, be blown away, like, hey, yeah, let's throw away all this DC crap and, you know, implement your stuff. Because Edison was so invested, and he knew what he had would work. He didn't have the same understanding of AC that Tesla did. So he was skeptical, rightfully so. In the meantime, that's where we get to the ship that Edison couldn't repair himself. This ship had one of the early lighting systems with a dynamo and uh, electric lighting. And there was some issue where the dynamos kept burning out. Edison apparently had repaired it multiple times and it continued to break down. He was kind of at his wit's end with it. I don't know if it was mentioned in passing or what, but Edison said, you know, I'll give $50,000 to the man that can really fix this ship. Of course, Tesla heard it and raised his hand and said, I'll do it. Well, Tesla worked day and night for a number of days and solved the problem and came back and let Edison know and asked for the $50,000. And Edison apparently saying, you don't understand American sense of humor. He worked for Edison, you know, roughly a year. Then they got into it over the repair of the ship. Tesla walks out, I'm done. Tesla can't find work immediately. He was hungry, he, he didn't have any money. He didn't have a place to live and he dug ditches for like four cents a day. So he was barely getting by. This is when Tesla called it the worst time of his life. And by tragic irony of destiny, he was digging ditches for Edison's DC cables. Eventually, he was approached by investors and formed a company called Tesla Electric Light and Manufacturing, a company dedicated to arc lights. Arc lights are as simple as they sound. You use an electric arc to provide light. They were not good. The light was too intense and spent way too much energy. This is yet another dark chapter for Nikola Tesla because his investors pushed him out of the company. With the little money he had, he opened his own company called Tesla Electric Company. Finally, he could dedicate himself to his motor. In perfect timing, as Tesla is finishing improving the motor, he gets approached by George Westinghouse with an amazing offer of $2.5 per each horsepower Tesla's generators would produce in the future, plus $2,000 per month, which equals about $50,000 nowadays. And thus, the perfect partnership began. The reason why people called it the perfect partnership was because George Westinghouse and Nikola Tesla had two things in common. They were both inventors, George Westinghouse made his fortune inventing air brakes for locomotives, and they both hated Edison. Like, a lot. Do you remember how I said the timing was perfect? Well, not long after the perfect partnership began, it was organized the Chicago World Fair, probably the biggest event in the world at the time, and the theme for that year was electricity and electric lighting which means someone had to provide the lighting. Thomas Edison submitted a bid using his DC system, and the perfect partnership submitted a bid using their AC system. As I said before, the AC system is just more efficient, which means less cables, less power, and less money. As it's pretty obvious, Nikola Tesla won. To celebrate Nikola Tesla, one of the greatest inventors of all time, 
And to prevent him from being forgotten again, I created this poster that showcases his best inventions. If you want to get one, you can get it at intagza.com. The first 20 posters will be personally signed by me. The Chicago World Fair was a colossal event, just think about it. With the exception of some people on New York, no one had ever seen electric lighting at this scale. It was both exciting and scary, because it seemed like Tesla had forced the sun to work overtime. Nikola Tesla had many magical demonstrations at the fair. One of them was the Egg of Columbus, basically an induction motor that uses a free metal egg as the rotor that spins into equilibrium. For the people watching, it seemed like sorcery. This was an event that changed the world forever, and in parallel, completely destroyed the world of Thomas Edison. He was very, very angry. This was the beginning of the current wars. Edison was losing every single bit to AC, because AC was just cheaper. Desperate, he decided to start a campaign to prove AC was just too dangerous to be used. He would electrocute animals in public using AC, and even built an electric chair to execute people. All in hopes of changing people's minds through fear. And he almost did it. Once again, just as things seemed to be going very, very bad for Tesla, a challenge presented itself. For many, many years, a lot of people tried to turn the Niagara Falls into an hydraulic power station, but the project was just proving to be very impractical and super expensive. And then Tesla appeared. It all happened because the person in charge of the commission to decide who would take the Niagara Falls project was Lord Kelvin, an infamous British physicist. If you don't know who Lord Kelvin is, allow me to put things into perspective. Are you familiar with the laws of thermodynamics? You know the laws that govern the entire universe? Yeah, he formulated two of those. Do you know how the absolute unit for temperature is Kelvin? Yeah, take a guess. I could do this all day, but for the purpose of the video, the only thing you really need to know is that this guy hated AC. I mean, he did until he went to the Chicago World Fair. After that, he decided that Nikola Tesla was his man. Construction for the hydraulic power station began in 1893. And let me tell you something, everyone was panicking. There was a lot of money involved and a lot of rich people involved. We're talking about JP Morgan, John Jacob Astor, Lord Rothschild, and more. All of those people were in Nikola Tesla's hands, and his hands were not shaking, because in his mind, the hydraulic power station was already running. And that was enough. In 1986, the dream of Nikola Tesla became true. The switch was turned on, and the Niagara Falls were powering lights and streetcars all over Buffalo, New York, a city that was 21 miles away from the power station. And that detail is important because this time Tesla won against Edison, not just because AC was cheaper, but also because AC was the only viable solution to make electricity travel that far. The reason why AC is so much better for long distances comes down to this equation here. The power lost in the lines depends heavily in the amount of current. With AC you can just use very high voltage and low current through the lines, and then use a transformer to step down the voltage and increase the current. With DC you can't use transformers. Funny enough, most of our house appliances use DC current. That's the reason why you can't just charge your phone by plugging two wires into the wall. Your charger has a transformer and that transformer in its core has two coils of copper wire. As long as we're talking about transformers, we might as well talk about the most famous transformer in the world, the Tesla coil. In his experiments with AC in developing the system, he was looking for ways to make AC more efficient. Would AC transmit further with more efficiency at a higher voltage, and he was experimenting on how to obtain those higher voltages, and that's kind of the birth of the Tesla coil. Even before the construction of the Niagara Falls began, he was already working on a circuit that could reach millions of volts. Wait a second, wasn't Edison able to kill animals using regular AC? I mean, even nowadays if you get shocked by the 220 volts in your socket, you die. Isn't the millions of volts ID a little bit crazy? Okay, it's time we finally answer the question. What kills you? Voltage or current? Let's find out. Cameron, hit me. This person holding the lightning weapon is Cameron Prince. He is a Nikola Tesla historian and also a professional at building Tesla coils. The lightning weapon you saw before is basically a portable Tesla coil that shoots 1 meter sparks of about 3 million volts. The reason for me being alive and also to answer the question, what kills you are both the current and the voltage, but if the current is small, you should be fine even in the presence of millions of volts. The reason why the current is so small in this case is because, like I said before, the Tesla coil is a transformer that lowers the current and spikes the voltage. The circuit used in the Tesla coil is actually very, very clever. It uses a capacitor, inductors, and a spark gap. 
The capacitor is just a reservoir for electric charge, in the same way that this balloon can hold hair. If I pump hair into it, it rises in pressure and eventually I can release all that pressure. The spark gap concept is also important and pretty simple. Basically, if you have two wires at a fixed distance, it requires a certain amount of voltage between them for a spark to jump. In air, it's about 3000 volts to jump 1 mm. In the Tesla coil, the capacitor is charged with AC current. When the capacitor reaches a voltage big enough, a spark jumps and goes through the primary coil. Because the primary coil has few turns and the secondary has many, many turns, this current going through the primary induces an enormous voltage in the secondary. That generates a spark. This cycle repeats itself several times per second, and that's the reason for the pulsated sparks you normally see in Tesla coils. Okay, that's pretty interesting, but why is the Tesla coil so famous? What is the practical use? The first application Nikola Tesla found for this high-voltage, high-frequency generator was wireless light. If you put a fluorescent light bulb next to a Tesla coil, the light bulb lights up with no wires attached. That happens because the Tesla coil is also emitting an oscillating magnetic field that excites the gas inside the bulb. But as you can see, if I get away from the coil, the bulb goes out. So at this scale is not a solution for wireless lighting. The second application of the Tesla coil was the production of radio waves. Radio waves were generated at the time using a spark gap. As you can see, if I use this modern transformer to generate sparks, I can transmit simple Morse code to that radio over there. If I go a step further and I modulate the frequency of the sparks, I can transmit audio to that radio. Not the best quality, but you get the point. It's impossible to talk about radio without talking about Marconi. Tesla was the first one that I know of that used a capacitor in conjunction with an inductor to make a tuned circuit. And that's what Marconi used in the basis of his radio, which was stolen from Tesla. As far as I know, uh, the, the radio circuit at the time was not that complex, right? Oh no. Wasn't it as simple as opening up a radio, looking at the circuit and saying, well, circuit here, tandem of Nikola Tesla here? You would think. Marconi denied actually using it recognized that Marconi was using his equipment and accused him of it. In fact, there were several lawsuits against Marconi and others that didn't pan out. But Tesla recognized it and they denied it. And it was later proven by the patent office and the Supreme Court that Marconi's invention did indeed use the same circuit. Marconi leapfrogged Tesla is what he did. He used his stuff commercialized it before Tesla had a chance to. And the reason was that Tesla, she wanted to say, you know, I, I can do power, I can do video, I can do music, I can do voice, I can do all this at once. So with my system where Marconi is focusing solely on Radio. signals, yeah. yeah, voice. Marconi had had successes even back in 1899. A lot of people theorize and the dates correspond with Marconi's testing in England and Tesla receiving it in Colorado. That's insane. Yeah. Okay, let's be pragmatic about this. First of all, how would Marconi even steal the circuit? I mean, it's not like there was internet at the time, right? Well, there was an internet, but there was magazines. There were a network of inventors that were brought together by these magazines. The uh, Electrical World is one of the ones that comes to mind. Think of it almost as a modern day forum or Reddit thread, and but this was in print. So these people would submit things for the recognition of it. Tesla would submit his ideas and these other inventors would submit theirs as well. And they would kind of cross pollinate each other. It was a gold rush, essentially. Everybody saw the potential of radio and they wanted a part of it. I've seen this online in which I see a boot. Uh, it's basically x-ray of a boot and it's credited to Tesla. Is that real? That is Tesla's foot, yes. That, it is? <laughs> remember how I was, I was telling you they were sharing ideas? So Tesla was also responsible in some way for X-Ray. Uh, Redken is the person that's credited with creating the X-Ray for those you know purposes. But Tesla and he were communicating in that same forum that I was telling you about. So they were exchanging ideas and Redken used Tesla's work for that as well. 
the, the boot is an actual photo that was actually made by Nikola Tesla. Yes, and there's one of his hand as well. Okay, maybe it was easy to steal his circuit, but why wouldn't Tesla just release the radio commercially first? Well, it wasn't that simple. Uh, the laboratory that burned down was in? That was New York City, South Fifth Avenue. And what happened exactly? So Tesla, um, he was on the second floor and below him was an elevator company and they had a fire in their uh, part of the building, which then engulfed Tesla's lab as well. And it, it burned it to the ground. So Tesla lost everything, all of his prototypes, all of his tools. He basically had to start over. It was pretty devastating to Tesla. Uh, Mark Seifer says that was one of the low points in his life where um, Tesla, you know, considered giving up. It took almost a year for Tesla to rebuild, but he didn't give up. And what he did next is just out of this world. This is about the time Tesla devised his remote control boat. Tesla reportedly did a demonstration at Madison Square Garden in New York in the 18, I want to say 96, 97 kind of range. And that was where it was first demonstrated for the public. But there's nothing. Nothing in the New York Times, nothing in the New York Sun, none, none of the popular papers of the day have any articles about the boat that I can find whatsoever. There's one bit of proof about the boat that I'm aware of. Tesla maintained his lab in New York on Houston Street. He left his assistant in charge and his name was Sheriff or Sharif. Well, there's a communique between Sheriff and Tesla after Tesla got to Colorado, where Sheriff had told him that he had received the things back from Chicago. So that was the boat that came back after that demo at the Yacht Club. Those correspondences are in the Smithsonian, I believe. And uh, I, I do have a copy of them. Yeah, keep in mind when the remote control boat had multiple frequencies because it did multiple things, right? It would go forward, backward, had a rudder that can move left and right, as well as had a light on top that would turn on and off. Just to put things into context, whilst Marconi was trying to commercialize his wireless telegraph, Nikola Tesla built an RC boat in 1898. How insane is that? Even if it was amazing for the time being, it was just a publicity stunt, because what Nikola Tesla really wanted to do is to get funds to create his wireless energy network for the entire planet. All right, so in 1900, early 1900, Tesla decides that he's done all he can do in Colorado Springs. He picked a suitable location on Long Island. By this point, John Jacob Astor had died on the Titanic, so his primary investor was no longer available. Wait, are you telling me one of his main investors died in the, in the Titanic? Yeah. I didn't know this. <laughs> yeah, sure enough. Astor basically wrote Tesla a, a check for $100,000 in 1899, which, you know, do the math, that's uh, well over a million dollars in comparable money. This is where uh, J.P. Morgan comes in. His primary reason for partnering with Tesla uh, was because he was involved in yacht races himself. These were happening in England, and he wanted to basically take bets. He wanted to wager on these races with people in New York. So he needed that information about who won the races. Uh, it was all about gambling. So Tesla partnered with him, and I think the number is uh, 250000 this time that he got from uh, J.P. Morgan. But Tesla was a little sneaky in not revealing that his real focus was power transmission, not radio, not signals, not horse race or yacht race results. So Tesla built the biggest coil that he could within reason, and he began experimenting there with the purpose of, of wireless power transmission. Marconi was transmitting the letter S, and the signals that Tesla received also corresponded with the same dot dash kind of thing. Did Marconi ever like actually came public with uh, his circuit? Yeah, because that's what um, eventually resulted in JP Morgan pulling his funding because Marconi succeeded. If Marconi would have acknowledged that he was using Tesla's circuit and paid him royalty, he would have enough money. He would have had enough money. Because Nikola Tesla lost all of his funding and creating a wireless network of energy would require a lot of money, 
He tried to disguise his system as the one thing he thought it would get immediate funding from the US government, a weapon. It's like the death ray, just a myth, or it was it, it's something that he was actually trying to get to. He was trying to get to it. And, and I, I believe all that was just a means to an end for wireless power as well. It, it was just another avenue. It, it was also an example of Tesla taking advantage of the time because the war, the, the second war had just started and he wanted to do what he could to help, you know, with that war. He talks about electrostatics at some point. He talks about a directed energy beam. He talks about projectiles in some of them. One of the ways he looked at was using a beam, whether it be X-ray, laser. Tesla was experimenting with rubies. He couldn't keep the beam within a reasonable size over a disc. It was too scattered. It would disperse. It would disperse. Even after being forced to abdicate of his one true goal, Nikola Tesla didn't stop inventing. He invented a bladeless turbine. He invented a check valve with no moving parts and a mechanical oscillator that is rumored to have caused an earthquake. I won't go into these inventions in this video because I have dedicated videos talking about those. But keep in mind that after his death, Nikola Tesla had over 300 patents to his name. Nikola Tesla dies in 1943 before the Second World War ends. And because he wasn't originally from the US, all of a sudden he was seen as a threat, so the US government confiscated all of his belongings. Now, I'm not a fan of conspiracy theories, but this is where things get a little bit weird. An unrelated question, do you know of any audio file that actually contains uh, Tesla's voice? No, I've searched high and low for both motion picture, uh, which would typically have an audio track maybe, um, none. Nothing? None. Too. And here's the thing that stuns me. So Tesla, people know him best because of all these crazy articles that were written in, uh, in newspapers about him, especially at the time of his birthday in his later years of his life. So it was an annual thing. All these reporters would, they had it on their calendar, show up at Tesla's place, you know, in July. Tesla would give them these prophecies about what was going to happen uh, in technology. You know, this is something they're preparing for every year. And if they've got equipment, they're a newspaper, right? One of the biggest newspapers in the world. Why would they not have recording equipment? Is there any voice file of uh, Edison? Yes, there's video of Edison. Okay, so that's really weird, right? Yeah. Because it happens exactly in the same time frame. Yep. Now, to end this video in a high note, or at least a funny note, let me tell you a story about an improbable friend of Nikola Tesla, Mark Twain. Nikola Tesla and Mark Twain became friends because Nikola Tesla loved his books and Mark Twain loved his inventions. Mark Twain would visit the lab regularly and in one of those visits, he told Tesla he was a little bit constipated. Hearing this, Nikola Tesla told him that he himself had some problem digesting food and for that effect, he invented an oscillating platform that helped with the problem. Without even thinking about it, Mark Twain jumped into the platform and turned it to the max. And what happened next, well, was a shit show. Like, literally. I'll be very happy if I ever get to be one third of what Nikola Tesla was, and will be even happier if I can help the next Nikola Tesla to get where he needs to be. For that reason, in this video, I'm giving away a 3D printer. On my last video, I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was MechStudent420. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will win a brand new 3D printer. Thank you so much for watching and a big thanks to Cameron Prince for telling me all those fantastic stories. If you want to know more about these stories, you can visit his website at teslauniverse.com. I'll leave you now with some of the most fantastic predictions by Nikola Tesla. Also, remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!